everybody, my name is Janae Toy and this is my channel where I talk about whatever I want. So, we all know that I'm going on this massive trip around the UK perimeter in March. March of 2021, hopefully. But the question is, how did people get around the UK perimeter in March in, I don't know, 1721 or 1798? How did people get around in history? Well, I thought today I would talk about everything from the base layers up to, you know, the outer garments of what people would wear in history, because I'm a bit of a history nerd. <laughs> so starting with base layers, give me a moment. They would start out with a linen shift like this, sometimes called a chemise, I sewed this one myself, it's got my initials in the back, yep, JT. <laughs> now, usually it would be made of linen, it's, you know, the base, base layers, so it's what would be the merino wool of back then, but it would basically provide a layer of, you know, comfort for the women, comfort for the men, though with men, it would probably be a bit shorter and it would be a shirt waist. So, yeah. So that would be the base layer, right? And linen, it wicks up all the sweat, dirt, moisture from the skin. It's really good for that. People would usually have about two or three of these, you know, in their wardrobe. So this would be the base layer. Now, on top of the shift, what would people wear? That is the question. The answer is a pair of stays. Mine are a bit rugged. I, I've worn these quite a lot. You know, I've done hand sewn eyelets because history nerd. But much to the dismay of modern Hollywood, stays are not corsets. And also, corsets are not this horrible, you know, horrible machine that traps women. No. In fact, these things used to be called back pain relievers, and from personal experience, I can tell you they are. It gets rid of a lot of back pain. I actually put my stays on, and I sewed them by hand myself. I put my stays on after my 20 mile hike, and honestly, all my back pain, gone within an hour. <laughs> like, it was pretty great. So, these stays are made of cotton, and the bias binding, obviously, I think that's polyester, the, bu the bias binding on here. But yeah, so it's cotton, so it's not really suitable for walking long distances. Though they would have been made from either cotton, linen, or silk in history. Silk obviously traps heat as well, because it's technically a man-made fiber but it's also natural because it comes from the silkworm but what am i doing to kind of make up for that so here ah where are we there we go <laughs> that's the pieces i want so here we've got all the pattern pieces in blue because i like blue blue's a good color and basically what this is going to do is it's made of polyester so it'll be really quick to dry and yeah i'm making a pair of stays out of polyester because comfort and quick drying and lack of hypothermia always great now in terms of petticoats i don't actually have a petticoat but I've got this skirt that I always wear and I love this skirt because it's so comfortable it's on a drawstring you see it's got a drawstring plenty of extra string but yeah I'll often just hang it like this you know but the problem is this is made of cotton now it is a beautiful skirt and I'll probably use this as part of my performing outfit because it is so comfortable Problem is it blows around in the wind a lot, which isn't great. Now, in terms of um, rain wear, outer, you know, rain, 
I told you last time that I was making a skirt. <laughs> I've made that skirt. It's very comfortable, again, on a drawstring, but unlike this skirt, which has many different panels and flares out a lot and is really beautiful and lovely, this one is just a single panel, literally just a rectangle of fabric. I've got it on wool because I don't have a drawstring yet. I can fix that though. But it literally is just all one panel. And I sewed it up so it's got a lovely floofy bottom to it. But it won't go blowing out in the wind too much. You know, it's plenty big enough for me to, you know, adjust it as I'm going. So if I put on some weight or I lose some weight, it's adjustable because that's like the main thing. Because I know that when you travel, your body goes through a lot of changes. But yeah, so that's my plan for a skirt. Obviously, I need to coat this in. Um, I saw this waterproof spray that you can get from Go Outdoors and I think I'm going to coat it in that because while polyester is pretty waterproof it's not like fully waterproof and the great thing about this obviously it's a single panel so it won't go blowing around in the wind you know but also I have the kind of mental thing of saying I made my clothes myself, you know. Obviously I'm going to be bringing this with me. This was made by my nan. She's a very talented lady. I love my nan. And she made it for me for Christmas and it's so comfortable this, you know, this cardigan. And I've got, I think it was 25% wool and 75% acrylic. Cause we went and actually got the wool from the wool stand on the market ourselves. You know, I went with her for that. But yeah, as for what I'm going to be putting the bottom of the um, stays as well, just jumping back to those, I found about 10 metres of this beautiful lace. All I need to do is find some blue bias binding here so I can attach it on. But honestly, I love this lace. It's gorgeous. So, yeah. And... Honestly, like, that is what people wore in history instead of a bra, because bras are actually a very modern thing, you know. It went, so you had jumps and stays and corsets and then bras. That's literally how it worked in history, you know. So hopefully this gives you a better insight into kind of what I'm planning to wear in terms of stuff I've made myself. I've obviously got my um, leggings in there because they're fluffy leggings and fluffy leggings are great <laughs> but yeah so hopefully you enjoyed this video talking about stuff that I've made and yeah so have a good day YouTube bye